nobody talks really about the fact that, you know, in the early Soviet Union, I think I need to um, emphasize this. In the early stages of the Soviet Union, um, you know, there was a lot of wacky ideas that were not marginal. By any means, were not marginal. They were, like, very much popular among the elite, you know, like, intellectual and aesthetic circles. And also the spirit of the October Revolution, the spirit of the Bolshevik Revolution. I mean, you know, we obviously have the, the part that I've emphasized the most, which is actually what won out in the end, was peasant populist aspect, right? Of like this awakening of the Russian people, this awakening of Eurasia, and this you know, awakening of particularity. But um, there is also a really big modernist moment that defined the early Soviet Union. And that moment was overwhelmingly dominated, right? By this kind of fanatical form of modernism. The basic idea was that like everything we've inherited from the past and from nature is just one completely meaningless mess, more or less, right? And that uh, our ability to produce technology and our ability to produce form and our ability to assert the logos in the world, something like that, right? That is actually the sole site of meaning and the sole site of um, morality and worth or whatever the fuck you want. So basically there's this idea people had, right, in the early Soviet Union, which was that all of nature needed to be conquered. Everything that humans valued and had any sentimental worth whatsoever had to be <clears throat> completely conquered from scratch, from zero. Everything had to be subordinated to this new kind of like technics, right? This technics. And it's almost like everything bad you associate with liberalism dialed to a, like a billion, right? It's like, you know, there's, there's something kind of romantic and beautiful about it in a way, right? I mean, there's also this idea from the cosmos of resurrecting every single human being who had ever died in the past will get resurrected. Because even death itself and mortality is just a completely meaningless contingency. There's no deeper meaning or wisdom to nature or humanity. It's all just a kind of... Um, crime even it's like it's like just like class society right just like the old world and the oppressive society of the past all of it all of it is just completely accidental and meaningless that the october revolution the bolshevik revolution restored meaning to the world right and now just like class society was going to be conquered and we're going to have the communism. Nature must be conquered. Everything we value as human beings must be conquered. And, you know, the reason I'm saying, I mean, you, would, a conservative would look at this and they'd say, that's the most terrifying fucking thing in the world, right? Um, because it's everything they fear, like transhumanism and all that kind of shit, dialed to a max. So you'd think that's like the scariest thing in the world. But actually, when you think about it, there's something pure religiously pure about this vision right this vision of completely conquering nature completely conquering uh you know all of the past and eliminating the whole of the past and starting from scratch because the pendulum swings both ways in this kind of almost this apocalyptic view of the future which will wipe everything clean it's not like there's going to be lgbt and there's going to be you know this woke shit or anything we will basically become machines. We will not only will become machines, we will become kind of like uh, literal squares, right? Like we will transcend to the level of pure form and pure abstraction, completely leaving everything from the past behind. Everything from the past behind. Not even our humanity will, will survive, right? And when you think about liberalism, part of what makes liberalism so grotesque or let's just call it woke liberalism and i want you to think about this it's not only the way that it subverts traditional values it's also the way that it perversely smuggles in elements of the archaic and elements of the past like for example there is obviously a conservative critique of lgbt the conservative critique of lgbt is basically that lgbt subverts this fundamental form of the family and that's why it's a problem. But dialectically speaking, right, you can also have uh, a, a kind of more insane ultra-left critique of LGBT, which is basically that LGBT is too conservative. It blends and meshes and mixes and matches the older norms of human sexuality, 
but it doesn't eliminate them altogether. It doesn't liquefy everything altogether to the point of arriving at the kind of pure form of modern cogito and the pure form of the modern logos to the point where we become this kind of ethereal, uh, angelic kind of insubstantial uh, beings devoid of any basis in the past or in human norms or in anything like that. Uh, no, it's not gender abolitionism because gender abolitionism is basically like saying, oh, we're just going to have a bunch of differences in diversity. But the Russian cosmism that I'm talking about means there's going to be no difference. We will all become ascended into this plane of pure space, of pure abstraction, with absolutely no room for individuality, individual expression, or anything. And this is a vision which is terrifying, right? <laughs> it's obviously extremely terrifying. But I respect it more than woke shit, obviously. And there's something about it that is inherently beautiful. And you need to understand that this kind of occult and esoteric cosmist extremism is the context in reaction to Stalinism emerged. Actually, Zizek talks about this, but Stalinism emerged as a response to this, right? When George Orwell wrote 1984, the book 1984, um, he was plagiarizing a Soviet novel written in the 1920s called We, the book We. And in the book We... It's not Stalinism which was the scary thing. It was before Stalinism, you had this kind of vision of total, complete modernization. And, um, you know, like this, we will all be leveled into kind of like uh, a complete organic collective society with no individuality whatsoever. We won't even be able to say the word I anymore, just we, right? And 1984 is a pussy version of this book, We, which was quite good, actually, right? It's quite a good, bo a good book to give you uh, an insight into, uh, into what we're talking about. So what I'm trying to say here is that in order to appreciate the experience of Soviet communism, you should be aware of this, um, this occult past, which I'm, I plan on uh, making a video about to kind of inform people about it. I think it'll be a really interesting video. And you can't really have a one-sided conclusion. And the whole reason, by the way, that Russian civilization was rediscovered was because they, under they finally came to the realization that this apocalyptic leveling was merely a kind of um, misplaced orthodox messi messianism, right? And out of this, they rediscover the particular form, right? It's this kind of, this is true Orthodox religion. And the Orthodox Church at that time had been totally corrupted and co-opted, right, by modern capitalism. So I guess what I'm, the lesson I want to draw from this before we get into our news and shit, and what I'm trying to say here, I don't want you guys to get caught up in right deviationalism. There's a left deviation, there's also a right deviation. And <clears throat> when we take refuge in a type of fake conservatism where... We take refuge in wholesome forms that make us feel good and comfortable. That's a tight, that's no different than consuming anime. You understand? The only reason Russians were able to rediscover their civilization was because they passed through this moment of apocalyptic modernity. And the same is true for Chinese communism. When you try to reify our tradition, whether it's the family or anything, you're mistaking the form for the content, right? And that's why it's very easy for conservatives, fake ones at least, to, you know, secretly have perversions and be perverts and have those kinds of issues, right? Uh, and then they're, you know, on the side, they're, they have anime, they're consuming their anime, and they're doing all that kind of shit. Well, the reason be for that is because um, they are using conservatism as a cope for avoiding the harsh, painful truths of what is modernity, the experience of modernity. So that's something I want, you know, I want to have as food for thought because you guys have to understand that one-sidedness is the root of all evil. We pursue what? What have I always said? We pursue the golden Stalinist center. And our enemies, leftists, want to pigeonhole us into a position that is not reflective of who we are and what our community is. And this is a line in the sand that me and the showrunners are not going to compromise on. So let me be very clear about something. Let me be very clear about something. 
And you know I'm telling the truth because I'm already banned from Twitch and I'm already exiled from the left. So I have no reason to pander or virtue signal to anyone, especially when leftists are my enemies. Do you understand? So let me be crystal clear about something. We are a community, right, where we are not going to harass you because of your private life. We don't give a shit what you do in private. Whatever your private sexuality is, is your business. We are not going to form inquisitions and try to... We are culturally different, right? We have people from all over different cultures and all over different religions in our community. We're Marxist-Leninists. So there's people who are from all sorts of backgrounds, right? And we need to have a level of respectful distance where this isn't your family, okay? We're not a family. We're not a family. We're not. We are not a family. A family is people who are related by blood. And then a family is people like a gang, right? Where everyone's from the same neighborhood or the same culture. And they all... We don't have that, right? We don't have that. I'm a fucking Arab guy from Michigan, right? I'm a random Arab guy from Michigan. This isn't an Arab community, right? There's things we are not going to, you know, understand each other on, right? And that's going to be true for our community as well. That's going to be true for everyone across our community, you know, whatever. And then when it comes to the sexuality thing, demographically, yeah, we're mostly dudes. We're mostly dudes in this community. And I get that. I get that, right? But um, don't get too comfortable. Don't get too comfortable because this is not a brotherhood. Infrared is not a brotherhood, right? We are soldiers. We're an army. We're not a brotherhood. We're not here to uh, jack ourselves off and, you know, be a, be a you know, you know. We're, it's just not, we've never been like that. It's not what we are. We've never been like that, right? So this is a community, and I'm going to say it, and oh my God, right? We are a community. We got women here. You understand? Women hold up half of the sky. That's what Mao said, right? And it's true. Half of every human being is women. 50% is women. Any society, 50% is women. And since we're communists, women have always been part of any real communist anything. They've always been a big part of it. Now, I'm not a woman. I don't specialize in women's issues. I don't go near that. I have nothing to do with it, right? But they do. They do. You understand? And if you can't accept the alienation that's represented by women, and you just can't be at peace with the fact that, you know, you want me to put it in religious terms, God made Adam and Eve, and we're different. One is from Venus, one is from Mars. But... It's two halves that make a whole. And you got to be able to live with that fact that you're not just going to have one half of the whole, right? And I'm going to tell you guys something. If you got a problem with women and you can't get over the fact that they exist and it's a thing and they've got their own problems and, and uh, ways of dealing with shit, you have a certain type of sexuality, which is you like men. And there's nothing wrong with that. And we accept that in our community, by the way. We're not going to bother you. If you're a, um, a dude who likes men, but you can't impose your sexuality on us. You can't impose your way on us. Do you understand? Because most of the community, right? And there's nothing wrong with it, but you know, most communities straight and that's fine. We respect all different types of sexuality or whatever, but don't be here. You know, you can't impose your specific sexuality on the rest of us. You understand? And it's as simple as that. You have a very specific thing where you... You're coming in the community. You don't want to see any women. Well, they're here. They're, they've always been here, right? There's not a lot, you know, especially because of um, how intimidating it is, which, I, by the way, on the other side, we don't pander to women. We don't go out of our way to like be like, oh, let's just be more friendly and let's change, you know. Uh, no, I'm not saying that. We, we will never compromise who we are. And I, I've talked about this before about how I'm not looking to make our community 50% women. I'm just saying, you got to be, you got to be a dude who, you know, if you're here in this community, what I'm going to encourage you to do is be with your family, be with your friends in real life, because this is not that. We are not a brotherhood and we're not a fraternity. We're not a fraternity and we're not a brotherhood. We're an army with almost every type of human being in our army, except soy boys, beta males, and liberals. And beyond that, we got almost every type of human being in this army. And we've all, we've been like that from day one. And we're not going to fucking change. We will not change how we started out at from day one. You understand? Yeah, I know 
that these leftists are our fucking enemies. But don't let them make us something that we're not. Don't let them turn us into something that we're not. We are not the fucking caricature that they made of us. There is another way. There is a golden Stalinist center. It's not one or the other. You got to either be a fucking leftist or got to be some kind of Nazi. That's not the case. They're trying, to, they're trying to do that to us because they don't want to accept the possibility that we're a real thing. They want to turn us into something that's already failed and already exists. And they don't want to accept the fact that we are a new orientation. We are communists with a capital C. We are Marxist-Leninists. We are that. They don't want to accept the fact that we are authentic about it. I got fucking banned from Twitch. So if there's any time in which I'm willing to come out and admit, hey, ha, hey guys, turns out I've been a fascist the whole time. I've been a Nazbo the whole time. I could do it. And not only could I do it, I could go stream on Cozy now, which I'm glad, I'm happy they gave us that platform. It's a free speech platform. But I could go and just do that, right? But it's not what I believe. We've been honest with you about who the fuck we were from the very beginning. We are Marxist-Leninists and nothing more. All of our influence is because we live in the West and we're trying to translate what they did in Russia and what they did in China over here. So when I talk about Heidegger and when I talk about Dugan and when I do all that kind of shit, I'm not fucking dog whistling anything. Stalinism tip $3.33. What's your perspective on the Great Leap Forward? Thank you, Stalinism. And it's complicated. You gotta understand that. You gotta understand the fact we haven't changed. We've never fucking changed. Don't let them try and win and change who the fuck we are. Because we've been the same from the very beginning. Our vision has been the same from the very beginning. And by the way, Go ahead and try to explain why I'm doing this. Because if there was ever a time I could come out as a closet right winger, it's now. If I did it, I would have a whole community behind me. I might even get more popular than I am right now. I might even make more money than I am right now. So community-wise, it doesn't even make sense for me to come out and say this. But I'm coming out and saying this because I don't want our community to turn into something that it's not. Because I don't believe it. But before we started out, we showrunners would talk about this. There are two sides of the same coin in our view, the right deviation and the left deviation. Two sides of the same coin. We are Stalinists. We pursue the golden Stalinist center. We don't have perversion here. We don't obsess over that kind of shit. So understand that. Understand we are communists with a capital C. We have a basic sense of human decency, which means respectful distance toward people who are different than you. Because our goal is not to transform and mold people into our image. I'm a fucking Arab guy in Michigan. Serpent Sushi tipped $3. Reject the right-left dichotomy. Embrace the golden mean. Thank you, Serpent. You gotta understand that, guys. We... I'm a random Arab guy in Michigan. You may be Latino. You may be white. You may be Asian. You may be black. I am not going to turn you into me. You're different than I am. You come from a different family than I do. You come from a different community than I do. But where am I reaching you? I'm reaching you on the basis of Marxism-Leninism. That's what unites us. What unites us, not only Marxism-Leninism, what unites us is that it's us versus the establishment. It's us versus these peoples in power who are the enemy of every single one of our communities. And I don't care what community you come from. You can be an Arab like me. You can be black. You can be Latino. You can be white. It doesn't matter what community you come from. We have the same enemy. And by the way, I'm a communist who believes we're united by class. I believe we're united by class. We're united by being part of the working class. Do you understand? That's what I fucking believe in. I genuinely believe in that. I would never, I don't need to lie to you about this. So let me make it very crystal fucking clear. I've never hidden what I was. I'm not in, I'm not in the closet with any ideology. You, you, I've been honest about everything from the beginning. And sure, on Twitch, I had to say things I didn't want to say, and I had to, or I, I had to 
stop myself from saying things I wanted to say, specifically in terms of things like tone. Like, for example, and I'm going to say this shit, I'm going to be just fully upfront and, and honest with you. Like, one of the things is about that whole LGBT issue, right? And, you know, on Twitch, you have to be pro-LGBT. You have to. You have to be pro-LGBT. So let me go full up front and, and center and tell you what I actually think. And it's pretty much the same thing I told you in the beginning. I am not against LGBT people. I don't think you deserve to be harassed because of your sexuality. I don't care what it is. That's your private fucking business. That's my belief. But I also recognize that as an interest group, as an interest group in terms of institutions and NGOs, that that plays a very specific role in serving the deep state and serving the ruling class at home and especially abroad. And I also am against this idea that gender relations need to be subverted or that heterosexuality is oppressive or some kind of shit like that, right? So that's what I fucking believe. I couldn't say that on Twitch, but it's what I fucking believe. I'm not against anyone for having a type of sexuality, right? But I don't believe it's a, it should be an interest group. I don't believe it needs to be an interest group. Jimberly tipped $13.37. Ultra leftists want to build coalitions but only under the bizarre definitions of groups that don't exist outside of their already established circles. Real movements conform to reality. You can't have it the other way around. Thank you, I appreciate that. I appreciate shit. And by the way, I said some shit, it might bother you guys, but I'm not neurotic about sexuality. You know, you don't really know me who I am in person, what I am in person. I'm not a judgmental person. I don't really give a fuck what you do. I'm not going to look at you wrong or anything like that. I'm not a judgmental person. I'm not neurotic about it, right? I just don't believe when you tell people that, you know, oh, being heterosexual is based in oppression. Or, and that's where it's going, right? And I believe more or less it is the norm. Heterosexuality has been the norm in every society in history. I'm sorry, that's the norm. I do agree there should be room for exceptions, and we shouldn't penalize people for being an exception, but in every human society in history, that's been the norm. And it will continue to be the norm. And that's my fundamental belief. But some people think it's weak to say some shit like that, where you're either 100, you, you know, people, for some reason, extremism is appealing, where you got to be, oh, no, I hate those people. I'm against those people. Or on the opposite end, you got to go, oh, uh, we got to subvert. the. Whole, you don't have to be a fucking extremist. You don't have to be so neurotic about it and so fucking obsessive about it, right? Now, let me talk about some other problematic shit that I, you know, I, I might have not been able to talk about on Twitch. Okay, how about this? How about it's not anti-Semitic to point out that there's a Zionist lobby in this country. Why don't we start with that conversation? It's not anti-Semitic to point out there's a Zionist lobby in this country that has a lot of influence in lobbying politicians, okay? And it's a very powerful interest group. It's an interest group. It's very powerful, okay? But, 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 it's not the only interest group. There's a Turkish interest group. There's an Armenian interest group. And there's a Saudi interest group. And I think we need to get over it. And I think both sides, when you obsess with the anti-Semitism shit, it turns you into a fucking dumbass. But when you deny it altogether and you start accusing everyone of being an anti-Semite for pointing out fucking common sense, it's two sides of the same coin. That's my view. That's my fundamental fucking view. Okay? And I don't even know if that's you're allowed to say that shit on Twitch, but I would never say it because, you know, I was scared to say it. But that's my fundamental fucking view. That's my view. And it's like people think I'm an extremist and I'm not. I think I'm a normal person who says pretty reasonable fucking things, right? But people pigeonhole you into this extremist position that doesn't reflect who the fuck you are. And it's like, what can you say? You know, what can you fucking say? Oh, Hans, you're secretly a Duganist. I talked about Dugan in our first fucking video. Our first interview with Cocky Duty. Shout out Cocky Duty, the OG. And I miss that guy. I want to have him on again sometime. But we, we would talk about Dugan, right? Because, you know, it, it's like, I, it, it was never a secret. It was our under, our relation to Dugan was never a secret. You seem to be intimidated by Dugan's thoughts because you're a dumb fuck who's never read any books in your life besides virtue signaling to your fellow fake MLs. And you are fake fucking MLs. And then you see someone new who has this new all-encompassing world figure like oh you must have loyalty to that one 
No, I'm still a Marxist Leninist. We are Marxist Leninists. Infrared, we're Marxist Leninists. We just draw from Dugan and we learn from him. By the way, I don't need to tell you this. I'm banned on Twitch. <laughs> All leftists hate me. Why would I tell you this if it's not what I believed? Marxism Leninism is not lucrative. If I started pretending to be a fucking right winger, and if I started to pretending to be a, you know, some kind of like hard right guy, I would wait, make way more money. I would grow way more. I am literally telling you I am a Marxist Leninist. It doesn't make me money because most of them hate me. And the ones who are here, you're here because you're hearing me out. I don't know. I'm just sick of people accusing me because it doesn't make sense. Why am I am not pandering to you? I hate you fucking leftist pieces of shit. I hate you guys. Why would I try and pander to you of all people? I fucking hate you guys. I don't want you guys. I don't need you. Hello, member of the ML gang here. We're not always on the same page on a great multitude of things. But we're on the same page where it matters, and it's in recognizing our enemies, Stalin's golden mean, now and forever. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate the donation. But that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. You know, if I was grifting off of this Marxist-Leninist, I'm doing a bad job of it because the way you grift is be woke. It, you, you deal with that fucking pipeline from, you know, the liberals to ML. My pipeline is hard. <laughs> I have to reach out to people who are apolitical and leftists who have harbor doubts and then right-wingers. and those, peop those, are tough, those are tough nuts to crack. You understand? It's not easy to do that. It's not fucking easy to, it's not easy to balance two things where I got leftists being my enemies, but then, you know, there may be, you know, it's just, there's just, listen, let me just put it this way. I'm saying this just to be polite about it, but it's like, it's almost like we're dealing with this spectrum issue where spectrum people on the left and spectrum, if you catch what I'm saying, you're on the right. It's like they're, they act the same and they're the same. And I'm here like in the middle, the Stalinist center, trying to be reasonable and dialectical, and both of them are after me. And it's like, you'd think I'd play them against each other and go on one side, or, and I can't fucking do that. We just, it's just our community. It's just us, right? Right? But you got that spectrum issue where you just, people love extremism. Lonely people love extremism. And I am not a fucking extremist. I'm not. I believe in norms. I believe in common sense. I believe in normie shit. You know that? I believe in normie shit. And I'm not really a normie myself. I'm a crazy guy who goes to the gym every day and sits on the couch and stares at the wall for four hours out of a day just thinking. And I read shit that's just not... It doesn't have anything to do with anything normal people care about. And yet I believe in normal people and their wisdom. And I trust normal. I trust normal. I would rather be in the middle of a fucking shopping mall than be in, the, in, in some fucking basement, some fucking guy, you know? I still believe in normal. I do believe in normal. I believe in normal shit. You know what I mean? I don't like extremism. I don't like it, right? I believe in the working class, and I hate to sound like I'm fucking virtue signaling. Thank you, Muskrat. Appreciate you. Muskrat tipped $3.33, Sigma Grind said. I hate to sound like I'm virtue signaling, thank you muskrat, but the working class, you got people from all walks of life. You've got majority in America is a white working class, but then you also got a black working, you got black people, you got Latinos, you've got people from wherever, we're all over the fucking place, and then, you know, majority, they're straight. But then you also got, you know, the, the dude who's gay or something, and then the, the LGBT, you know, I don't like the word LGBT, you know, but you got that shit too. And it's a thing. So get over it. Focus on the working class. That's what Marxist Leninists are supposed to do. You know, these, you know, these extremists, lefty pieces of shit, they pigeonhole us into an extremist position. They pigeonhole us into an extremist position because they justify their ultra leftism based on an idea that the majority of Americans are hateful people. 
So because most Americans are hateful people, we have to have Antifa brigades, and we have to have Antifa brigades, and we have to go against the majority of the people, and they made that shit up. It's not fucking true. Most people are not hateful fucking people. Most people are not hateful. I'm not a bitter, hateful person, and I'm banned from Twitch, my livelihood, making 5000 a month, all gone. I'm banned from Twitch, and I'm telling you this. And I'm never getting unbanned, by the way. Fuck Twitch. I'll never get unbanned from Twitch because of that new policy. I don't care. I don't... Even if I was banned from YouTube, I would tell you the same fucking thing. I believe in the working class. That's what I fucking believe in. Am I... Do I have prejudices as a personal person? Sometimes? Yeah, I do. I'm a straight... Arab dude from Michigan. I've got my shit as a person, you know. If you're friends with me in real life, you'll know that. But when we're talking about politics, and when we're talking about, like, building a movement in a community, you can't make that about your personality. You can't make that about your personal flaws or whatever. You gotta be, you gotta be able to respect the fact that other people are different than you. Other people are different than you. I don't pander to nobody. I don't pander to nobody. We're still the same. The same fucking... The, the same as when we had our interview with Cocky Duty. We're the same. We're, we didn't change. We never change. We've just reacted to the way people have reacted to us. And guess what? And you're not going to want to fucking hear this. You're not going to want to hear this because this shit's going to be a tough pill. It's going to be hard to believe. But people have reacted to us in an insane fucking way. Just admit that. Admit that based on what we started out from, people reacted to us in an insane fucking way. A crazy insane fucking way. Like, literally insane. They lost their fucking minds and we did nothing. We didn't do shit. We did literally nothing wrong. And it, we didn't even appease them. We didn't, it's not like we were virtue signaling to them, but like, we were never a hateful brand. We're not a hateful community. Don't fucking let these leftists think that you either have to be like them or you got to be bitter and hateful and resentful because we're not. Keep your fucking chin up and you can be critical of the LGBT interest group. You can be critical of that because it's a very powerful interest group, just like the rest of the interest groups in this country. But don't ever translate that into resentment or hatred for another human being. It's important to be a human being, guys. You want to know why it's important? Because I look around me and I can't tell anymore. I can't tell if there's a dude here who just likes stabbing people or some shit. I can't tell. So we got to make humanity something powerful and something strong. And that's what the gorillas and sons were about from the very beginning. It's about making humanity something powerful and something strong. Because it's very delicate. It's very easy to be a fucking psychopath in this fucking world. And it takes a lot of strength to defend humanity. It takes a lot of fucking strength. It takes a lot of fucking strength to defend humanity. It's easy. It's easy to be a psychopath. It's fucking easy. It's really fucking easy. But it takes a lot of fucking strength to be human. And you think I'm virtue signaling or saying some fake shit right now, and I'm not. I have no incentive to. I have no fucking incentive to. I believe in humanity. Like, something like when you see someone who's down, don't kick them. Is that so much to fucking ask? Show mercy on people. Be a human be I'm telling you this because the internet has made us forget this kind of shit. It's turned us all into vicious fucking people. It's so hard. Yeah, you know what? It sounds cringe. It sounds like that guy from South Park. Mm, being a bad person's bad, okay? Okay, it's bad. That's what it sounds like, right? But you gotta look past that and see, we've really fallen as a society, and it's really fucked up. And there's gotta be some level of humanity. There's gotta be some level of where you just say, you know, I can be a human being. I could treat other people like a human being. I could have a basic sense of, prohibition that there's a line i'm not gonna fucking cross out of respect for my father my mother 
my ancestors or whatever the fuck you want. That sounds fake. That sounds weak, right? Well, I want that to be a weakness that we defend with all of our fucking might. I want that to be a weakness that we defend with all of our fucking might. To the grave, metaphorically in a video game. It's weak, just like your mother's weak. It's weak, just like a newborn child is weak. It's weak, just like everything that at the end of the day matters in this world is weak. It takes strength to defend something that's weak. I agree with you. Being a human, it's weak. That's why it takes strength. It's weak. That's why it takes strength. I wasn't planning on going on this rant, but I just, you know, I've had so much on my fucking mind. And I've been thinking about it for so long, you know, especially yesterday and today. And I'm trying to go back to the roots of what infrared was. And I was thinking about it. And I'm like, I'm getting mad because they're trying to turn us into something we're not. And we never fucking were. They're trying to turn us into something we're not. And we never were. I don't believe in extremism. I don't. I'm not an extremist. I am not a fucking extremist. I've never been one. But when these leftists accuse us of something that's so fucking crazy and left field, it's like when you respond by saying, no, 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 that's not how we are. It's almost like you're telling them, oh, I'm weak. Come attack us more. Let us, let, let us make us look softer to you than we, all, than we already fucking are, you know? This internet shit is fucked up. This internet shit is fucked up. You understand? This symbol right here, this is weak. This symbol right here, this infrared thing, that takes strength to arrive at. That infrared vision is so delicate. It's so fucking delicate. And it takes a lot to arrive there, you know? This Easter, full disclosure, I'm not a fucking Christian. I'm not a Christian. I just feel like this is some shit Jesus would agree with, okay? So I'm going to say it. I feel like this is something Jesus would agree with for this Easter. So I'm going to say it. When we have the opportunity to show cruelty or show mercy, let's show mercy. Because it's easy to show cruelty. Let's show mercy. Let's show mercy. When someone's down, if they're a snake, you leave them there. But if they're not, it don't hurt to lend a hand to bring them back up to where you are. Because guess what? It happens to the best of us. It happens to the best of us that we're caught in the wrong time and place and we're, we're down bad or whatever the fuck you want, right? Because we're only human. We're only fucking human. So when someone's down, lend them a hand and bring them back up. But only do it from a position of strength. Because when you show mercy from a position of weakness, you're being a coward. Only show mercy from a position of strength. You understand? And don't trust people. I'm not telling you to trust people. This is a wicked, cruel, fucking dog-eat-dog -dog world. And... Telling you the truth, most people you encounter that are down probably deserve it. You should probably turn your back on them and walk away. But don't don't assume that every misfortune that be befalls anybody was meant to be or some shit like that. Because it happens to the best of us. Yeah, it's a tough balance. It's a tough balance. We had so many people come and attack us, label us as evil, horrible, hateful people when we're not. Why? Because we... We were against the lies they were spreading about China and Xinjiang. And that, that gave them the fucking green card to make it seem like we're a bunch of inhumane monsters. Sick people. But you can't let them turn us into sick people. You can't let them turn us into sick people too. Because we're not. And don't, don't get it twisted. This only works from a position of strength and power. And that's what we need. And that's what we have to focus on and continue to build. Strength and power and part of that means mowing our fucking enemies down with no mercy and absolute cruelty but what kind of community do we want to build when all is said and done what do we want to do when all is said and done we don't want to uh we don't want to have a community of bitter hateful people even when we destroy our enemies and they show genuine remorse maybe we'll help them back up and go forward forgiveness i don't know what it is with some people they just like being vicious. They like being vicious. I don't like it. I like being normal. And don't be an extreme. Remember, that's the enemy. One-sidedness. You know, you got to be tough. You got to be strong. Don't confuse mercy for your weakness. Because mercy only means anything from a position of strength. And you show mercy, they'll take advantage of you. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. The one thing that matters that I want us to set us apart. We want to forgive people, not for being bad people. Forgive people for being human. Forgive them for being flawed. 
Forgive them for not being gods. You understand? Nothing wrong with that. Forgive them for that. Because that could be you. Just like how y'all forgive me. You don't think there's imperfections in my image on this internet? What would someone whose first impression on me be if they didn't give me some kind of charity or forgiveness? That, you know, maybe there's something, something more to this crazy, silly shit, right? So do that for everybody. That's what I want us to do. I want us to do that for everybody.